I would like to tell you a few words about myself. I suspect that most of you know me well, but still I wish to start with a short introduction. Usually people start by saying who they are in church, what is their calling, but I would like to simply say that my name is Agatha and I am Arthur's wife. Together with my husband, we run a church in Warsaw. I met Jesus 16 years ago. It was the time of an utter failure in my life. I was an extremely hurt person. I started my relationship with Arthur when I was turning 16. And today, you know, I'm able to talk about my past in a very conscious way. And I'm able to tell you why I started my relationship with someone like Arthur. It was all because of my emotional deficit. I simply didn't experience father's love back then. And Arthur presented a father to me somehow. And I just followed him, clung to him. Of course, I heard from different people that he is a bandit and so on and so forth. But... It didn't matter back then. The lack in my life and need for love was stronger than everything else and I just decided to be with him. I wasn't scared by the fact that he killed a man because the need of being wanted and strong rejection in my life uh, made me ignore the opinion about him and I also stopped caring about the symptoms he was presenting. Everything that mattered to me was the fact that he was interested in me. He wanted me. The feeling of rejection was so strong that it made me focus just on Arthur wanting me. And, you know, we lived our life. Uh, when I was 16, I left my parents' house. I started my relationship with Arthur. We started living together. Initially, I had no idea about his friends, contacts, associates. He thinks he was engaged in. I also wasn't interested where is the money from that he used to bring home. What was important was the fact that he has money, that, you know, he I am important to him. He doesn't want initially have sex with me. And everything I, that was important to me was the fact that he planned on marrying me in the future and so on and so on. What's also interesting was that I knew that he was meeting different women, but I wasn't scared. I wasn't hurt because of that. And it took me years to find out why. Because our relationship was father and daughter relationship. And daughters are not interested in sexual life of their fathers. You know what I mean. Realities of life. I simply wasn't interested in my so-called father's sexual life. So we lived our life... Then I turned 20, I gave a birth to our son Victor, he's 21 today, and it was the time when, to tell you the truth, our life was really awful. I realized that Arthur is a member of an organized crime. He was a member of a local grouping run by criminals and they were engaged in illegal activities with some awful men. Meantime, he served his time in prison and I was visiting him in prison and to tell you the truth, uh, for 10 years time when he was in prison, I was visiting him. You know, I didn't know Jesus and I thought that this was what love is all about. I had strong feelings for him, distorted, but I knew that I love him somehow. But it wasn't good between us when uh, Arthur was taking drugs and I remember the time he wanted to kill me and he was taking drugs at home and even though I was afraid of him, I knew how strong he was, I was never a quiet person. I always wanted to speak my mind and I once told him could you please not do these things at home and I remember that he took a gun, he pointed it at my head and you know, he just squeezed off. If the clip was full, I would be dead today. His brother was with us at home and he took a away the gun from him and I also remember Arthur's mom came to me and said why are you talking why do you have to speak your mind you mustn't talk to him he's unpredictable so I slowly started realizing that 
my thoughts about Arthur were false, elusive, and he wasn't giving me a sense of safety. Uh, he wasn't a father to me. I felt I'm going down, I feel hurt, I started to be afraid of him because he was unpredictable. I was afraid that my son is in danger. And just like I've told you, the people he was meeting were cruel and brutal, worse and worse. Each time he got out of prison, he met um, worse and worse dregs. And, you know, uh, because of all that, the projects he was involved in were also worse and worse and more brutal. Firstly, these were some petty thefts and robberies, and then it ended up in organized crime group. Our life was going by, and the time came, I felt so bad that, not even realizing that God is real and He can hear me, I cried out to Him and said, God, if you are real, either kill Him or change Him. And I remember there was a crime he committed and he had to go to prison again he was uh, going to different hospitals for mentally ill people just to get away with the imprisonment and usually the story was the same he was successful and so on but not this time and soon after i cried out to god god kill him or change him i heard the phone rang he called me from prison saying that they locked him up i was happy i was shocked mm, his mom came back from work and said oh they locked him up mom we are going to get rest and our life will be better now and on the one hand it's a dramatic situation because a man was taken to a prison but on the other hand because all of this atmosphere and I was fed up with this fear I was happy that we would have some rest and after three or four months I got a letter from him and I read in this very letter that he met Jesus that Jesus forgave him his sins and now he's asking me for forgiveness firstly I thought I'm afraid he went nuts and he burned his boats, and now he wants to use religion in order to manipulate people. I was afraid of it. However, I have to tell you that when Arthur was in prison, I was going there to see him. And this time it was the same. I took our son and we went to see his dad. This time the prison was the prison with very strict rules in Sturm City. I have to tell you that I have seen Arthur in different situations and conditions. And when he wasn't born again of the Holy Spirit, he has been pretentious and overblown. And he was awaiting me with incredibly long list of things to do starting from sending some parcels through smuggling messages, messages ending with me going shopping you know a huge list of things to do and I was saying we are having only 60 minutes to talk and I'm going to spend 55 minutes waiting in a line to buy something and this time when I went to see him he came to me wearing a green uniform and I was able to tell the difference that a different man came to see me. He wasn't rehabilitated or re-socialized, but a totally different man. And it was the first time ever when he didn't bring me a long list of things to do, you know, to buy. And actually it was the first time when he was really looking at us. He was interested in me and his child. And then, you know, I back then I wasn't, uh, I didn't know how to describe it, but was was important to me. I was impressed by what he presented. And after some time, Arthur came back home. We started our life. He told me I need to be born again, otherwise I will end up in hell. I said, uh, you are crazy, you were a thief, a criminal, you were a fornicator, you were everything, devil incarnate. It was you, it was you. And me? And I was sitting in a kitchen smoking a cigarette and he was repeating, you are going to hell. And I said, for what? For smoking this cigarette? And I remember his mom came to the kitchen. She was an ultra Catholic and said, leave the kid alone. You have no idea what love is all about. And he said to his mom, 
Devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. His mom went quickly to a bathroom and disappeared. And I thought he went nuts. And he said, Mom, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to a devil. Don't be angry. And he knelt down saying, Father, I pray to you in the name of Jesus. And I thought, oh, no, I'm not sure if he was normal. I thought it was he, he was crazy. What happened to you, Arthur? What happened? What's wrong with you? But on the other hand, I was observing his life, you know. He was praying about everything. He was reading his Bible. Someone called him up. He calls them brothers and sisters. Brother and sister, Arthur, is everything fine with you? Are you okay? We used to live in a very small room. And he was uh, uh, staying there and praying, and I was shutting myself away in a bathroom. I was taking glass and put it on the wall, trying to hear through the walls what he's praying for. But when I saw that his old fellow delinquents used to come and offer him operation, cooperation and big money, he was just sitting with them at the table and saying, I met Jesus, and I saw that he's serious about that. I need to, you know, get my ducks in a row. You know, he, he was a normal man, normal guy, healthy one. Maybe he really met someone. Maybe it's real. Maybe he really met God. And I thought, God, how to eat this problem? And I was struggling in my mind because he was repeating me all the time, Agatha, you need to be born again. If you don't do it here on earth, you will go to hell. And I was asking him, me, me, me and Jesus, we are so alike because I thought that Jesus and I, we had a lot in common. Jesus was killed and I was almost killed. You know, I should be taken to heaven, you know, for, for For, you know, the fact I was a victim here, I suffered a lot in this life. And, you know, once I decided I'll go with him to a church. I wasn't impressed by the service, but I saw that, you know, there are more people like Arthur. And from the very beginning, I saw that he is different because he was really involved in the meeting. He was engaged. All of him was engaged in the meeting. And, you know, I was an observer. I was looking at people around and I said, Arthur, not everyone is like, just like you. You are very involved, but many people here were talking for 45 minutes about camera here. You know, I was able to tell the difference between them and him. And... You know, because I was emotionally involved in a relationship with uh, Arthur, somehow I allowed them to involve me in this criminal world. I didn't know much about that, that I can suffer some consequences in the future. And I have to tell you, I had a company. Uh, it, it was called Victor to honor my son. It was an advertising company, but unfortunately... Uh, Arthur used it to accomplish his uh, evil ends. So he took a lot of luxuri luxurious cars using my company name and details and he took out loans from the bank. And one day, you know, Arthur was born again, I wasn't, and at 6 a.m. in the morning, a police uh, police came wearing balaclavas covering their faces and they arrest both of us. I was scared. I can't use the words to tell you how I felt that day. You probably know the scripture in the Bible that says about horrible pit, and I think I felt I was stuck in a horrible pit. I felt awful. The charges against me were horrible, you know. I could spend years in prison. Arthur wasn't afraid. He just looked at me, he gave me some money, and he said, don't be afraid, you are going to get back home. And I could see that he wasn't afraid. So they arrested us, my four-year-old son was there at home, I was petrified. So I just asked the police officer to inform my mother-in-law to uh, leave work, earlier and uh, go to my son. I was extremely afraid he will be taken to the police station or a foster family or an orphanage. And um, when we were in the car, Arthur was preaching the gospel to me. And, you know, I remember that. I remember 
all the words Arthur was telling me, and in my heart I cried out to God, God, if you are real, if you are just like Arthur told me, then don't allow me to go to prison. And I was taken to a prosecutor, he told me to sit down, he uncuffed my hands and I knew Arthur had already been questioned and he had told the prosecutor all the story, how they set me up and so on, uh, but the prosecutor didn't care because he could see my signatures on the documents. So from the legal perspective, nobody cared that I was set up. I was thought to be a part of all that mess and along with them I wanted to uh, extract a loan from the bank in order to buy luxurious cars. And I was there in the room, the prosecutor looked at me and said, there are two preventive measures. These are police custody and police surveillance. And I decide you will be given uh, surveillance. You are free to go. And at this very moment, I knew that his decision was made because of God that I had prayed to. And I am a great fan of being aware that you are born again, that you are a newborn Christian. So I go back home and I'm not giving my life to Jesus because I feel no need to do so. Why? Because I feel amazingly righteous man, you know. So God made a miracle for me. I wasn't taken to prison, yeah, but I am not giving him my life to him because I don't feel I need to do it. I felt I'm a just man. But there is a Bible at home that Arthur is to read, and I felt like reading it. Something was telling me to start reading it. I didn't know what was that, but I decided to do so. And I said, God, Arthur will has given his life to you and he was repenting but I do not feel I need repentance I do not feel I'm a sinful man and I also remember the words that Arthur said that the Holy Spirit reproves the world of sin and righteousness and of judgment and if I'm a sinful man God convinced me and proved this to me and then I took the Bible and started reading. I tell you, if anyone who even looks at a woman with a sinful desire of wanting her has already sinned in his heart. In his heart. And I thought that God proved to me I was a sinful man in my heart. I was there in my own room and I gave my life to Jesus based on my inner conviction and based on the need in my heart. I was sitting there in this room and I understood that without Jesus I am nothing. And I said, God, I need you to be my Savior and my Lord. Washed me clean with your holy blood. I need you. And you know what? I started to be a new creation. Before I was born again, I was petrified. But when I gave my life to Jesus at the very moment, I felt a strong man in my life left me. Fear. It was a fear of dying. It was a strong man in my life. A fear of dying. I remember I once wrote a letter to Arthur that I have given my life to Jesus. And when I was writing to him, I knew what he was telling me, what it means that he was a new creation, that he's a new man. I was so curious of what our life is going to be. I thought we would be like a couple of crazy love teenagers, even though we've known each other for such a long time. And we have our four-year-old son. But still, I knew that some new type of life is there ahead of us. And I want to tell you this. I've never felt lonely again. I've never felt solitude. When I received Jesus to my life, I stopped being a lonely man. And I want to tell you that this is also for you. This is what meeting God is all about. It is the power of being newborn. It's not about some type of special prayer that needs to be spoken, but this is what happens when you really meet God. For two years and three months, I wasn't allowed to see Arthur because I was co-defendant. So they didn't allow us, us to, to see each other. I wasn't allowed to visit him. But 
I want to tell you that meantime I fell in love with Jesus and somehow I forgot that Arthur was in prison. You know what I'm talking about. I didn't desire make love and Arthur didn't desire to make love when he was in prison. We were writing letters to each other. You know, we were getting to know each other. I knew. We were happy that one day we are going to meet again. And this meeting will be special because both of us are totally new creation, brand new people. This is the power of God when you become a new creation. And sometimes I meet people who say, I met Jesus, and I ask them, and so what now? And they tell me, I don't know how to live my life. And I say, go back, go back to the cross. Because meeting Jesus changes your life forever. You will experience a radical transformation.